attention. The movie guys love movies. Any comments about how we'd like your support in order to help keep the showcast going are purely for entertainment purposes only. Seriously, we need your support, or we might have to stop being entertaining. Isn't that right? Wait a second. Let's fire this thing back up. <laughs> Get it started. Let's Emergency start it power. We're going to have the generator this time. Yeah. <laughs> Felt like we went off the air for a minute. Oh. That was a little frightening. It was. Yeah. Uh, for those of you wondering what that opening was, we never opened with that. In fact, in six years of bringing you content, <laughs> we've never opened with, hey, we're having a pledge drive. But we are. Well, we've never thought to ask for money. No. And we've then I logged on it. the internet, and everyone's doing it. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, turns, right. out, turns out that's There's what you do on the internet. Whole, and the internet's money. everywhere. There's whole websites just help me do stuff. Yeah. Stealing music right. and asking for money. <laughs> right? That's what the internet does. Basically, if you have stolen a CD in the last few years, just give us that money. We're just we, we're asking yeah, you to yeah, spread right. it around a little bit. Repur- Go to the movie guys. Repurpose that $13. Yeah. Right. yeah Speaking of thing. which, I burned copies of Jake Johansson's CD for everybody. Remind me. Oh, after nice. Oh, so, poor Jake Johansson. <laughs> hey, welcome to the I movie showcast, everybody. Part of the vast <laughs> and sprawling movie guys empire. If we went to a Halloween party as Batman and Robin, I'd go as Robin. That's how much you mean to me. You've reached ground zero for all things movies and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with jokes, rants, sketches, characters, bits, special guests, and more as we broadcast from the Admirals Club in the heart of Burbank Airport's flyover zone. They don't stop making movies, so we don't stop making comedy shows about movies, which means you can get a new show every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Vimeo, Pulp Epic, YouTube, Player.fm, and of course, the themovieguys.net, absolutely free, and, and we encourage you to subscribe, especially on iTunes. <laughs> If you subscribe... Yes, Paul. Paul, I have a question. Yes. How much would that cost me? Still no charge. Wow. Still no charge. Free. Free. Free to subscribe, but feel free to donate. See, there's a difference. Ah. Uh, subscribing costs nothing. Right. <laughs> we shouldn't get people so excited about this being free. <laughs> right after the thing I did? Yeah, yeah you're right. Well, we blew that. Well, Saying. feel guilty if you're listening right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, listen, we're also on WBAD.net, Internet Radio, Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, basically, search the movie guys on uh, Google, Yahoo, or... Bing! Bing! And we come right up. <laughs> I'm your host for the hardest working podcast on the airwaves, Paul Preston, here with Karen Volpe. You're the best in your row. Bart Caius. Look, you're in this mess because you're in this mess. I didn't get you in this mess. And Adam Witt. Meanwhile, at the Justice League... <laughs> we will be joined later in the show... By an actor who has appeared in close to 200 projects, 100. including some titles that are right up our movie guy alley, X-Men First Class, Air Force mm-hmm. One, Tango mm-hmm. and Cash, as well as seven oh. seasons of 24 as Aaron Pierce. Now he co-stars and is producing a new film, Flutter, opening on digital HD and VOD on multiple formats, April 7th, Glenn Moore Shower. Yeah. 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 We'll be here later. But first, 151 24 hours. What's that? He was in seven seasons of 24. That's, that's seven days. That's yeah. 151 wow. of them. So, isn't that hours. how you do it? How many yeah. hours is that? Yeah, 151, isn't it? But how many days? I can't do math. Seven. It's seven seven days. days. He was on the <laughs> show Wait, for seven days? Episodes. He was in a week of 24. Yeah. In the timeline of the show, it takes 24 hours for a single it? season. Oh, so he was, he was He was only on the show seven days. Yeah. Wow. Only a week. He really one did week. a lot in a week. He had one week. Yeah. One week of work. Yeah, you know, people long for a week of work yeah. here and there. You know, he's successful, though, in terms of a week of work. Guy, okay, everybody yeah. knows who he is for a guy who only worked for a week. I know. Impressive. Actually, uh, Paul, there's a retraction coming. I oh, did my shoot. math wrong, but we'll get to that next week. <laughs> <laughs> Already? 168. Thank oh, you. You know what? I did that one. So good. Good <laughs> <laughs> thing Glenn's here. By the way, off camera, Glenn goes, no, it's 168. <laughs> Moron. <laughs> I got a hard time for that once when someone was uh, like, one of these billionaires has blankety blank amount of money. And it's like, you know what? If you just gave, he like, so let's say he had uh, $17 million. Well, if you just gave, you know, 17 million of us a million dollars or 17 of us a million dollars or something like that i got it all wrong i just screwed the math which shows why that guy has the money and i don't and for the record i had a pen and paper glenn didn't no and he got it right still got it right all right well listen let's get to what we're uh what we do best what do we do best you you would be hard pressed not math (laughs) you would be pressed hard adam (laughs) to find a better way to prepare yourself for the weekend's new movies uh it's what we do. Movie right. previews. And all other major movies have gotten out of the way of this weekend's one sole release, Furious 7. Mm. No, mm. it isn't that new Quentin Tarantino western. Mm. It's this. Oh. Looks like the sons of London have followed us home. Remember Owen Shaw? This is his big bad brother. Everybody talks like that in this movie. One last ride. What da da. 
Oh, that's right. Clear your throat. Oh, yeah. yeah, the whole movie's going to make you want to go. <clears throat> <laughs> I need a lozenge. <laughs> yeah, Furious 7. <clears throat> that was the original subtitle. <laughs> Colon. <clears throat> I think Vin gets uh, pissed to where he yells. I want to hear that, right? Does he yell much? He doesn't need to yell. <laughs> Glenn's got a lozenge Glenn's in case lozenge anyone talks about Furious 7 to. again. <laughs> but they're all change his whole career. Don't change Vin Diesel's career, Glenn. Don't give him a lozenge. <laughs> Did I say Glenn was coming up later in the show? <laughs> I lied. I love when people are in the right. galley. Yeah. Yeah, he's in the green room. The best. It's better. He's in the green room chair. Uh, all right. Well, our first and only film is Furious Seven. But don't worry, Furious no dialogue will get in the way of all the explosions. <laughs> <laughs> Unedited. Thank you. That, really? is, that is literally 12 seconds oh of the trailer. <laughs> yeah. In order. But cool shit's going on there. Oh, yeah. Sure. It's, uh, you know, they're they're doing one of them heists. I like when they heist. I like when they heist. They're good at yeah. heisting. Yeah. It's like Ocean 17. Like, they just keep <laughs> doing heists. Yeah, Fast Five, they stole that, they ripped the vault right out of a bank, drove it down the street. That's great. Why not? More of that, please. So good. Uh, well, yes, as you heard, Furious 7 is ushering in earplug season. <laughs> Uh, Adam, let's tell the people what this movie is all about. Okay. Karen's brother's band tearing up. Speaking of earplugs. The Fast and Furious franchise comes to a close with what could be the final entry in the mega franchise. Who will win? Who will live? Who will die? <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm going to have to shut this whole thing down oh, now. Oh, no. God, the, depart Come on. the department oh. of too soon already. Well, we've just started. Yes, well, I was told to come and observe this show for excessive references to Paul Walker, who died just over a year ago, which, by all definitions, is too soon. All right, come Yeah, on. but I wasn't we even... Say anything. All right, listen, we'll try and keep references to Paul Walker reverential to his talent yes. as an actor. All right, deal. Just don't get carried away. All right, listen. You just wait over there while we talk about the movie. Okay. Furious 7 is the sixth movie in the franchise to star Paul Walker, the fifth to star Vin Diesel, and the sixth to not star Little Bow Wow. <laughs> With every number the Fast and the Furious franchise gains, it loses a letter, choosing to follow up the furious list title Fast 5 with Furious 7. I assume if they decide to make another movie, it'll just be called 8. Fun fact, this whole yes. franchise is based on a magazine article titled Racer X mm. about Japanese car racing. Mm. At least we think it's X, but if the X stands for a Roman numeral 10, well, we can expect three more of these movies. Okay. And everybody's back. Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, The Rock, Jordana Brewster, Michelle Rodriguez, even the cast of Too Fast, Too Furious, Tyrese and Ludacris return to this action fraternity. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, that's what, too what, soon. Huh? Adam, that's clearly an SAE reference uh, regarding those two black cast members. Uh, what? You what? tried to slip it past me. Well, I got my I, eye on you, buddy. I think it may have slipped past me. All right, listen. With every new installment in this franchise, they add another big star. Not content to be a Vin Diesel movie, they added The Rock. Not content to be a Vin Diesel and The Rock movie, they've added another actor who's his own genre, Jason Statham. Mm. With Statham joining the cast... This movie has enough sweaty chests and bulging biceps for the governor of Indiana to come out against this movie's right to buy a gay wedding cake. Too soon. Oh, too on. soon. Seriously. It's a good joke. It's good, but too soon. Wait a while. Thank you. Well, <laughs> while nobody goes to a Fast and Furious movie for a plot, they all seem to go the extra mile and have one. <laughs> <laughs> After defeating Owen Shaw and his crew, Dominic Toretto and the rest of the crew return to their normal lives. However... Owen's older brother, Deckard Shaw, hmm. is after Dom and his crew, oh. seeking revenge for his brother's death and putting the entire crew in danger. Ooh. So the crew sets out to find the man who killed one of their own before uh -huh. he finds their crew first. Wow, these guys are really serious about their rowing. Are you thinking of the wrong type of crew? <laughs> oh. I did mention it a lot, though. Oh, okay. So these have scripts? I just thought these movies spontaneously produced themselves and then just showed up in theaters. Well, regardless, this story takes place immediately after the last movie, so now I have to have seen all of them to catch up. Like, the only reason I go to these movies is because I'll never be able to catch up with Game of Thrones. <laughs> with each Fast and the Furious movie, they try and up the ante with their adrenaline-fueled automotive stunts. And Furious 7 acts like it has something to prove as the trailer ends with Vin Diesel driving a car out of a skyscraper window and crashing right into a... Too soon! What? Too soon! Another skyscraper! That's what I was going to say. What are you talking about? Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you were going to say the Alps. No, they're no, not no. crashing Jesus. a plane. They're crashing a car. Yeah, what is wrong with Too soon, too soon. Crashing as we all a car. Oh, come on. Adam, must I remind you, Paul Walker died tragically in a car crash. Please refrain from talking about 
cars and or car crashes. While previewing a Fast and the Furious movie? Okay, listen, I don't make listen, the rules. Stay in the corner. <laughs> Just go, stay over there. If you hadn't noticed from the Department of Too Soon, who is with us without being invited, or the fact that everyone in the poster looks like everyone's at a funeral, the death of Paul Walker casts a long shadow over this movie. No matter where the series goes, this will be Paul Walker's final entry in the series after his tragic death, November 13th, 2013. Really? It, it, oh, what? I'm sorry, it, it was that long ago? It seems just like yesterday. Well, yesterday was March 31st. Too soon! Too soon! Too soon. Right, enough of this. Enough of you. Get out of here. That's, uh, that's Furious 7. Wow. That's... There are seven of those movies. And they're already hinting about an eight. And I have seen none of those movies. Are you seriously haven't seen any of them? I haven't. I've not seen a single you one. Know what? Hey, well, I'm, we're going to do a screening yeah. at my place. Me and, my, oh, me and Charlie, we're going to watch I, all of them. You know what? You I, already have, right? Well, I'm. I, this is one where I'm I'm a little behind. There's a couple I haven't seen. So. Well, here's the thing. I'm, Tokyo Drift, which nobody's seen, but also I haven't seen. <laughs> hey, Adam, I'm <laughs> I'm busy that night. Weirdly oh, enough. Yeah. Karen. Yeah. What night was that? I, yeah. I checked. The one that you're having the screening. Yeah, that's the one that's I'm busy. Whatever that's the one. I didn't even is. have to say the date. You're already you busy know what? that night. Up at Universal, I think I've seen the Fast and Furious little ride thing more that they eventually <laughs> closed <laughs> than I've seen this movie. But a new one is opening up. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. They're going to make the tram go like 100 miles an hour That's be cool. it was always make funny. it like that oh, yeah. yeah i've done the uh tour of universal like three or four times mm -hmm. and uh it's just so funny that they, they made this whole thing about tokyo drift yeah. and nobody remembers tokyo drift that was you know i mean vin diesel was done with the series paul walker mm -hmm. was done with the series and they made this movie called tokyo drift but then everybody came back for the next one which sort of kicked off the new trilogy quintilogy or whatever but uh it's just so funny every time you go to universal it's like tokyo drift <laughs> yeah, nope, that's gone now so yeah they're doing it right um but this yeah this is I, I, what so you haven't seen all of them which means no. you haven't seen the most recent ones because it's the most recent ones that are the best i know that's it that's they get increasingly more crazy yeah and perhaps unbelievable <laughs> but more and more entertaining. I no, th this is the great thing. I haven't seen five or six, oh, which five is, is key. Great. I know. Yeah. That's the thing. I've seen one, two, and four. Spoiler alert. <laughs> they rip a vault out of a bank. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I thought you had seen it. So, oops. No. I'm, ex I'm excited. I'm excited to watch all of them. I'm even going to watch Tokyo Drift. I'm glad Statham is in this because I like yeah. him, and he shows up in so many bad movies. I want him to be in a legitimately solid number one huge hit. And yeah. I think this will be it. He should do what The Rock does and glom on to sequels. Yeah. Like, The Rock shows up in the second of almost everything. Yeah. The second or third he of waits, almost everything. He waits to make sure it's worth your time, <laughs> yeah. and then he goes, yeah, I'll do Witch that. Witch Mountain, G.I. Joe, yeah. he's coming that, in late <laughs> and cashing in. That might not <laughs> be a bad idea, idea though. Mm. So I think Statham should do that. I want to see him show up in Witch Mountain 3 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> But it looks like another one of those uh, movies where, because it's so outrageous and heightened, they get in these fights that, like, The Rock punches Jason Statham and he flies through a window. That's me. I'm dead. <laughs> I do not survive <laughs> from throwing the punch. Yeah. Because you're... Just, yeah, because oh, <laughs> <just, no. laughs> yeah, of his jaw. Punching the guy in the jaw, face. Right? Uh, no, but me, they, they're pummeling each other, and you know, yeah, they're comic books. movie pummeling. You know, that's that's what's interesting. There's There's superhero movies, but there's also comic book movies that aren't superheroes this is a comic book movie i love that <laughs> we talked about walking through the house at night and oh stub my toe son of a ah! Ah! you know like i can't imagine the horrible pain that is and now this guy's flying you know through a window and i and, do like the fact that if, anyway i'm just speaking from photos i've seen but the women look pretty badass in this movie Oh, um, no, yeah. that's Paul Walker. Uh, oh, they're shut great. Up. <laughs> Too soon, you're stupid. Oh, that's, no, that's the, Tokyo Drift. Well, he left, so none, of them, are, none of them Rodri are in Tokyo Drift. Rodriguez, what's yeah. her name? Michelle Rodriguez. She is pretty badass. Is she in, in this yes. one? Yes. Yeah, I think so. She's great. Jordana yeah. Brewster's Jordana great. Brewster? And not for yeah. nothing, I saw Michelle Rodriguez at Comic Con, and, you know, she wasn't so tough. She had on a dress. Oh, Ooh, yeah. She, she's gorgeous. Well, she's an actor. She's oh my God. playing a badass. Yeah, but it's good to see her all proceed up. Yeah. Speaking of sightings, the last time, the last movie I saw was the premiere of Fast Four, Fast and the Furious Four, Fast and Furious, sir, whatever it was called. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at, what, yeah. What is it? They, Universal. They, they, they went from like, is it the Fast franchise? Okay. Is okay. Here's it how the, it goes. There it goes. Is here's it the how it goes. Furious? Okay. The first one back, is. Should we back and forth it? Go ahead. Yes. Right, the first one is on. the Fast and the Furious. Next up, Too Fast. Too Furious. With they the lost two, two thus. With the number two. Yes. With the number well, yeah. two. Too Fast, Too Furious. And the third one kind of breaks the format a little bit. Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. The Fast and the oh, Furious. The Fast and the Furious. Colon, 
Tokyo, Tokyo Drift. Drift. So the first colon. The does. <laughs> and friend of the show, Stephen Lewis, we know what a colon means in a title. It allows more shit to go through the system. Just yes. like in the body. Just like in the All right. body. <laughs> uh, then they lost everything, pared it down to Fast and Furious for the fourth one. Yeah, just Fast and Furious. And mm, then... Mm. No number, just no, Fast mm. and Furious. Fast... Mm? No, oh, no, mm. they didn't go... Mm, they just went ampersand. Oh, and okay. has survived a lot of these titles. And so maybe that's the next one. It's not just eight, but and eight. But Fast mm. Five... Is the sequel to a movie just called Fast, for all I can uh, presume? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Fast and Furious 6, and now we have whatever this now, is. Now, but yeah. if I refer to it casually, Furious can 7. I say it's the Fast franchise, the Furious franchise? Exactly. Who knows? Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, you you should say Fast and Furious franchise. I think everybody says that. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, when do you refer to this casually? <laughs> <laughs> Parties, get-togethers, yeah. water cooler no, at work. <laughs> but the best thing it's to say- It's the buzz about town, Karen. <laughs> I'm out of the loop. I really am. Well, listen, let's let's tell people what it's about oh, okay, who may good. not have seen the trailer. Okay, Because oh. anyone who's tuned into our show knows that we're not just here to entertain, no. but we also provide a public all. service. First and right? foremost, For journalists. journalists. Is that right? <laughs> then entertainers. Ouch. Then casually referring to Fast and Furious socially. <laughs> <laughs> and then hairdressers. Okay. Uh, CPR and then specialists. mathematicians. Mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's also why every month here we do a segment called Trailers for the Blind. So this is for you. Phone call at home. Explosion. Ooh, now, now a close-up on a poster of the bad guy. Okay, okay, cars are zooming by. More explosions. Oh, uh, people are jumping onto a hijacked vehicle. Oh, we're gonna get you out of here. No, car crash. Plus over a cliff. Explosion. Plot. More cars. Hot women. Machine guns shooting out of the side of a bus. Nearly naked woman waving, waving a flag. Okay, now people are walking slowly down a series of steps. Explosion. Plot. Load a gun. Load a gun. Load a gun. Load a gun. Cars parachuting out of an airplane. In super slow motion! Vin Diesel Solo! <laughs> what? What? Back to the story! We're Car crash! Ooh, uh, window crash! We're Car crashing through window crash! You don't mess with We're the rock! Now. He doesn't call himself that anymore! Oh. Explosion! Plot? Well, I guess you'll just have to see it. Yeah. That looks awesome. <laughs> it sounds amazing. <laughs> it sounds great, too. Uh, we, we do that every month. Is yeah. that true, Paul? Oh, of course. Yeah, okay. exactly. Great, I think good. The, That's one helpful. One April a few years ago. <laughs> now, remember when Jamie Kennedy was April on the show. April is a month, Paul. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of fun with how hushed-toned and gravelly voiced the actors were being in this year's movies. Take a listen. There's no room for heart in this game. I'm uh, asking for my son's life, Sean. When it's done and it will be done, then I'll let you die. And Jamie Kennedy got in on it playing uh, Batman, saying oh, yeah, something yeah. innocuous. Yeah. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody, nobody can out Diesel Diesel. Yeah. Give him a reason to stay. Wasn't hiding. That's the deal. Take it or leave it. I am rude. <laughs> Now, you throw Statham into this film with Diesel, and we should have a growl-a-thon on our hands. Well, it turns out we're way off. All right? It's all computer-enhanced. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So Chet loudly voice coach to the stars is a scam? <laughs> yes, I guess. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have him in here. He's anymore. a fraud? <laughs> yeah. Who would have thunk? I'd feel had. Just like your visuals, in order to achieve what you want, <laughs> computer effects are added to the audio as well. Here's raw footage from the set of uh, Fury oh, 7. Okay. Now, what do you want to hear first, actually? I'd you want to like hear... The, how it ended up or yeah, yeah. how it sounded original. Oh, I want to hear oh. where they ended up so then we can compare oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It to where it came from. Okay, well, let me play you that. How do I find him? The official answer is you don't. When you find that some bitch, just do me one favor. What's that? Don't miss. And of course, The Rock also getting down there. Right? Yeah. So that's all computers. That's, that's computer. All computers. Yeah. That's computered. Yeah. Well, you know what we want to hear? They really sounded like on the yeah. set that oh, day. Oh, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. How do I find him? The official answer is you don't. <laughs> when you find that some bitch, just do me one favor. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> don't miss. They, they sound like that, just like us. They right? sound like normal people. Wow. They sound shorter and thinner. <laughs> right. And yeah. then, don't how they? do I find him? <laughs> It's all different. Sounds very, right. yeah. yeah. Hey, how do I find him? It sounds like they're good at math <laughs> originally, and then they get worse at math. <laughs> well, there's nothing technology can't do. And I think it's time that we... Uh, what the heck is this? Oh. 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 Yeah. oh, you know what that song means. I think I do, Paul. That means it's time for our quadrennial 
That means we haven't done one in four years, right? Yeah. Movie Guys Showcast Fundraiser. Why are you asking me? I can't do the math, but I think quadrennial <laughs> means every four years. As regular listeners of the show now, every four years we hold a fundraiser to help cover the cost of bringing you all this wonderful show. Now, it's not something we enjoy doing, but it has to be done, so please bear with us. We have operating costs to attend to and looking to expand. We have ideas for some big things that you're going to like. So I want to bring to listeners' attention that if you go to the Contact Us page at themovieguys.net and hit the Donate button, you'll be taken to PayPal's website, and you can donate any amount you choose. All right? We would appreciate it because we got costs and things. We promise you there will be weird things afoot in the future that uh, you'll be helping fund. Adam, is he have a, uh, yeah, I hear the Sarah McLaughlin song, so if everyone could just look sad, I'm going to do a oh. montage to oh, okay. this that can be run late at night. Sad, Paul, sad. There we go. Come do we on. need to look at camera? I wasn't Come on. sure. Very, look sad. I'll take a couple here. Right. Aaron, just your saddest look there. This is going to go very good. Don't let you too bad. Too bad. Oh, why won't these people? Here, i got to get one of myself. The dogs do it better. I've noticed. The dogs have bigger eyes. Yeah. They're more expressive with their cool. eyebrows. Yeah. I'll put together a montage. We'll play the Sarah McLaughlin song. People will feel bad. Yeah. And we'll donate. Well, Sounds here, perfect. Well, here's what you get for each donation. <laughs> right? For example, donate $20, and we'll name a movie preview after you. Oh. I remember oh. when this happened to Larry B., one of our listeners, a few weeks ago. Kind of a yeah. big deal for Larry, but more so for us. Right? That could have been Larry B.'s Furious 7 preview. Yes. Yeah. Karen, what do you got? Oh, well, I was just thinking if you donate $25 to the movie Showcast, you will get a special mention in Karen's birthday segment. You know, the one that I use at the end of the show to wrap everything up? It's on you whether or not you want me to reveal your actual age or not. And because you know how much I love to hear celebrities sing, if you donate $25 and send a clip of you singing, (gasps) we'll include that as well. You take checks? Because I think I know what I'm doing this weekend. I think so. Karen will even lie about your age. Absolutely. (laughs) I'll definitely lie about your age. It's $150. (laughs) Bart? Well, Paul, if you donate $50, uh, we'll name the show after you, Ah, which sounds like a bargain for $50. (laughs) For example, if Karen Volpe, sitting to my left here, donated $50, this week's show would be Karen Volpe's The Movie Showcast. Oh, fun. This would, of course, exclude known felons. So, sorry, Karen. Oh, that's like like the Colgate Comedy Hour, right? Like back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Well, we don't want Scott Peterson's The Movie Showcast. (laughs) It would just be bad. It would be bad. Adam? Now, if you donate $75, you can rename Bart Caius. What? That's right. He was known as Lee. He was known as Bart. Lee Bart. Who the hell knows what his name is? And anyway, we screw it up all the time anyway, so just send money and send an idea of how you'd like him to be named, and we will go with that for an entire show, or probably more, because it'll be hilarious. Can I go? Uh, can I make a recommendation? Fast and Furious Bart, or Furious Bart, or Fast Bart? <laughs> or Tom Cruise. Or no, Tom Cruise. no. That's free. We'll call you Tom Cruise for free. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So don't forget what you'd be paying for here. With talk of a shift in net neutrality looming, we want to stay in the Internet's fast track and not get knocked down to steerage. We pride ourselves on being a real production, not just what you guys get in most podcasts. Comics, huddling around a mic in an echoey room. I mean, we uh, bring you writing, jokes, sketches, guests, great movie talk, and more. You may have heard these podcasts that are out there. Let's give them an example of what they normally get when you tune into a podcast. Here we go. Okay. Hey guys. Uh, hey. 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 So this. Sorry, I'm late, man. Fuck traffic. Uh, I was on Santa Monica Boulevard. Man. Yeah. I just Quentin Tarantino sucks. Hey, you guys. You know what? I got a parking ticket earlier today. Check out oh, what Karen's wearing. Look at him wearing. wearing. It's crazy. It's pretty hot. Neat. So, <laughs> so are you guys gonna go see Fast and the Furious? Totally. Seven. The seven. Oh one. man. They call it Furious Seven. So hard to keep track of those movies oh, they make. Oh, uh, I was gonna say something. Just again, just remember what. Oh you're my paying. god, it's so uh, hard to do that. <laughs> remember what you're doing. Oh about. Lord in heaven! I was not ready for that, Paul. That is really difficult. <laughs> There's a note on the script that said, "Improvise a Improvise bad show." Improvise a bad I'm show. Like, yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I want to hear this. I, oh, that's what we're doing. We're doing it now. Okay. So donate today, and all your your all year long as we compile a budget to run this ship more effectively and expand in all the ways we want to make the showcast yeah. better. Uh, and it starts with. Another great guest! Yes! Yay! We'll be back in 10 seconds with IMDb overachiever Glenn Morshauer. <laughs> right, in a, right in a minute. Here we go.
Hey, it's time for this week's guest segment. Hey! hey! Joining us is an actor who's appeared in close to 200 movies, TV shows, and, and uh, video games now as well, Ooh. including the new Netflix show Bloodline, just ah. renewed for another season. Nice. We'll talk about that. Awesome. And the new film Flutter. Only one of two uh, projects he's produced, I believe, if IMDb is to uh, be believed. I think it is. I don't know. Guys like you and I submit to it, so who knows? <laughs> um, but anyway, this is a new film that stars uh, co-stars Jesse Plemons and Lindsay Pulsifer. It's available from Marvista Digital Entertainment via VOD platforms such as Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, Vimeo, Vudu, the usual suspects. You will be able to find it. Plus, on demand with AT&T, Charter, Comcast, Cox, DirecTV, TWC, and Vubiquity. I don't even know what that is. Wow. But uh, look into just that. to let you know how well spread out over the world Flutter will be on April 7th. You can find it. You can watch it. It's all going down on the 7th, but it's all going around right now with Glenn Morshow, everybody. Hey, Glenn Morshow. Thank you. Thank you. As I like to say, film and television's Glenn Morshow. Indeed. <laughs> he says that all the time. You've seen him on both those things. Mm -hmm. Good Lord, there are so many uh, credits to uh, go through. But uh, first, let's talk about Flutter. So I, I would love to do that. I'd like to give a shout out to our Hispanic brethren who could be listening, watching today. Y muchas gracias por escuchando este radio estación aquí estaría en Los Ángeles, donde hay muchas personas que hablan español. No, we can do the whole thing in Spanish that if you wish. You are from Texas. He's you. so multi-talented. You are from Texas. <laughs> can you do uh, Can you do that Spanish with an Australian accent? I've never merged the two. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be amazing. I guess you could put Vegemite on your taco. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good merge. Uh, to, uh, Vegemite. Studio Espanola, me a squaler. Pero no recuerdo mucho. Oh, very nice. Oh, very nice. Oh, nice. I memorized, I don't remember much Spanish. So that's all I can say. Uno, uno dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. That's, that's nice. fantastic. Yeah. I love the merge. Very Vegemite nice. is my favorite uh, Australian black exploitation film, by the way. But anyway, You're so go ahead. Stupid. You're Rudy Ray Moore was in Vegemite. Vegemite! <laughs> You're so stupid in so many ways. So stupid. Thank you, Karen. Stupid. Speaking of uh, black exploitation, Flutter. No, Flutter is no. not. Come on. Uh, tell us what it's about. Flutter is a, a love story, really, uh, between a mother and her son, her, her unconditional an unswerving commitment to his well-being. He suffers from a condition known as nystagmus, and he has glaucoma and is going blind. She is in um, a difficult marriage where her husband uh, and Jonathan's father, played by Jesse Plemons, the character's name is David. David is a wannabe musician who is on the road often, and I play his father, so I step in as the male presence in their lives to try to make life somewhat manageable. Uh, the story is beautifully written and directed by Eric Huber, and the kid who the story was based upon, Jonathan Huth Jr., is not an actor, but we decided that he was one in our movie. Yeah, so is. having never appeared in a film, he has one of the two leads in the movie. What's beautiful about this is he has exactly zero actor goo in his performance. Yeah. It's entirely yeah. authentic. We're very pleased with it. Yeah. See, it I've shows. said this about child actors, and that's one of the strong, yeah, real totally. strong points of this movie. First of all, all of the actors in this movie really are amazing, yeah. and that really Absolutely. sets this apart from a lot of independent films. Mm. It's amazing. Across Curtis, uh, Curtis was one of my favorite. I love Curtis. That Curtis was Charles up. Halford. Charles he, Halford was. We great. should explain. The scene. We should explain. One of the uh, plot uh, points is that. Uh, the lead character's name is is uh, Jo Lynn. Jo Lynn, right? Jo Lynn. She has to resort to pot to help quell the pain that the the young boy's, the boy's eyes, eyes are the giving. The pressure. Him. Yes. And so Curtis is the it guy who reduces the pressure. That's very good yeah. in glaucoma. Yeah. And you were talking. Uh, Curtis is the dealer. So there yeah, you, you were talking yeah. about the the actor goo, and I have this big complaint about ch child actors of today. They all act. Like they think we expect kids to act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to act like a kid because I'm precocious and I'm young <laughs> instead of just acting like a child. And that guy, the the young man in this, you're saying he actually has the condition? Yes. Is wow. which is not a condition that uh, on camera could be faked. You know, mm -hmm. nystagmus is where the eyes move rapidly I in a horizontal in a movie. horizontal manner. Yes. And hence the name flutter because his eyes flutter. 
And um, that was the end of the movie. There's a shot of his eyeball doing that. I'm like, absolutely. How did they get that car- kid to do that? I said acting. the same thing, and I, I said was, I could do that. But I didn't and I know said, it. No, <laughs> I didn't know he was that good. I said that's a really specific thing. How did they get that that child to be able to do that? How did they do that? And it's a real. I guess he's dealing thing. with it. Yeah, yeah, he can't. How about this? He can't not do, do that. that. Mm. And so, uh, it, which makes it almost impossible for him to read. Right. So he was parroted the dialogue by his uncle, Eric Huber, our director. Oh, and he knew the script better than anyone other than Eric and would simply parrot the lines back with such heart and such feeling um, and such genuineness. It was really something to behold something none of us will ever forget. What a privilege and an honor to be associated with the film. Wow. And, yeah. and Eric has directed before? He directed uh, a film uh, right before that called, what was the name of it again? Oh, yeah, Rainbow's End. That's right. And we had seen Rainbow's End at the Dallas uh, International Film Festival, and that's where we met. Uh, he was already developing Flutter at the time, and they needed a redheaded mid-50s Texan because the child, who is 9 to 10 years old, has bright red hair, and he's an authentic Texan. And so he wanted me to do the role, and uh, they asked about six months in advance. And I was not going to be available uh, because at that time I was scheduled to resume filming of Dallas on TNT, where I worked with Jordana Brewster. Ah! Yeah, a little little connection there. And um, so uh, not only did Carolyn, my wife, um, and I decide to fund the film, because we wanted to put it on a fast track. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am available right now, so if you'd like to shoot the film right now, we will send money to an Austin bank. Mm-hmm. Let's go rock and roll and make a film. Right. And then, of course, the missing puzzle piece was the son for me, the father for Jonathan. Jesse. And I thought, what Texan in there, <laughs> th- around 30-ish, who has red hair, <laughs> might I phone? And I called Jesse, and I said, you want to... Um, join me for a yet another tour as my son because he played my son on Friday Night Lights. Oh. And uh, immediately he said yes. So we had a really grand parade of yeses. Everyone said yes, and that's how we were able to make the film. Glenn, we, we'd like to shoot a show right now. Could you wire some money to a Burbank bank? <laughs> got, uh, w- I mean, literally right now. Can you do that? You know, did, I've, I've got the cash did you, on me. Did you hear we're having a pledge drive? So this couldn't work out better for all of us. i got to be honest with you. Timing's amazing. So that's pretty impressive, though. <laughs> oh, what nice Here, I have, oh, a, good I have an envelope of hundreds. What, what, what is this? What, 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 what did you need? What did you need? Just half of that. Damn. The first three on the top will be fine. I think I know what we're doing after the show. <laughs> to the Spearmint Rhino, everybody. <laughs> ah, very nice. <laughs> Ain't gonna do a little dance for you tonight. <laughs> um, so pretty impressive oh, awesome. then for for Eric to jump right in and direct this. Uh, oh yeah, this kid, I mean, um, you know who re- who has a, this particular way he has to perform. Well, the way they did it is they they put Jonathan in front of a camera and did a test shoot, a sizzle reel, if you will, for two scenes. Sent it to us. We'd read the script. And when we saw this, our hearts melted. We were crazy about this kid. And uh, we thought, you know what? We're a pretty good template for appreciation of uh, a a performance. Only it wasn't a performance. It was just this kid being a kid, the very thing you were referring to, to Bart. And so uh, we (laughs) fell in love with it. And we said, yeah, let's let's star him. And it was uh, it was beautiful. And the thing is, no one else could have. Uh, brought that performance out of him because it wasn't just the director; it was Uncle Eric, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was special. That movie uh, mm-hmm. takes place in a very poor part of Texas, oh, like heartbreakingly like, poor. And any movie mm-hmm. that takes me somewhere I've never been or never seen, it kind of reminded me of not on such a scale. Beasts of the Southern Wild. Did you uh, say I, same thing? What, what's written Take, right down here? Uh, yeah. Beasts <laughs> of the Southern Wild. Hey, your notes. He's we, referring right to that underneath Mission Impossible 2. I will tell you there, somewhere <laughs> I've never been, so there have been endless comparisons to Beast of the Southern Wild. Oh, really? Mm. Have you ever, have you, anyone here spent much time in Texas? I have to tell you, and you may not want to hear this being from Austin, Texas, but no. the El Paso to Dallas dr- freeway drive is the most depressing in the world. I that can't argue that. Uh-huh. Okay, but that's what I've done. When I got to Dallas, I liked it. But yeah, um, and that's all I've ever done. No, well, done. here's the deal: I would be remiss mm-hmm. if I didn't mm-hmm. coach all of you to count to ten with me in Texans. So okay. could you yeah, do that no with me? I right. just might re- have to do it in Ohioan, but uh, just repeat uh, after me, you, okay? Get a loose <laughs> jaw going. Here we go. You ready? Just no repeat no after there. me. Just say one, one, one two, two. two. No, you got to stick your neck out and look a whole lot more stupid than that. Goes like this. Watch each. 
two. 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 That was good. Three. 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 Next one rhymes with lawn mower. It's pronounced <laughs> four. Four. Two <laughs> syllables. Four. 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 Back of the four. throat. Four. Five. 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 Whistle on your S. Six. 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 Next one spelled S E B M. There is no V, and it's pronounced seven. 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 Back of the seven. throat. Eight. 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 Nine. Nine. And the next one's also two syllables. It's not ten, but rather ten. 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 Which rhymes with Glenn. 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 So that's. Uh, I've been saying it wrong the whole show. Have you ever asked anyone for directions in Texas? Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you what we do. We tell you. We tell you where not to go. <laughs> which is just weird you pull over and you go yeah i'm uh, i'm trying to get to a starbucks and a guy goes okay here's the deal here's here's the deal you want to keep going down maple street he's making you're, the most amazing face you're yeah. gonna go to you're gonna vimeo. go about go vimeo for this one. you're gonna go about two miles till you see that big oak tree on your left <laughs> don't turn there that's what they do <laughs> Where I'm from, it's very uh, it's Western New York near Buffalo, so they have a lot of the same qualities. They have a Southern accent, though we're in the North, and they do a very similar thing. Only they say, "What you need to do is go down Thornton Road until you get to the old barn that burned down." Yeah, that's not, not there, there anymore. anymore. Yeah. Not there. It's not okay. there anymore. Fantastic. Back to the movie. How do you feel about? The beasts, of the beasts of the Southern Wild comparisons. My wife has seen it, and yeah. I have not. Yeah, hmm. uh-huh. and, and, and to maybe to Paul's point, it, it it's obviously not the same movie. There's maybe a similar theme. Um, you have a child actor who's obviously breaking out in both of them, and it takes place in a very very desolate part of Just the somewhere country. I've never seen mm. or been um, or want to go. Yeah, mm. but yeah. there's there's an amazing realism to your film. Glenn. Was, I mean, it's just. There's nothing pretentious or fake or put on about it. I mean, you really feel like they just dropped a camera down in Bar... What's it called? Bar... The county... There's Um, a sheriff that shows up from Bartow. Oh, you're talking... Oh, in Bastrop. Bastrop. Yeah, Yeah, you just feel like... the area of Texas that had the huge fire a Mm. couple of years ago, and and, and everything burned up down there. But people are real sweet uh, in, in... Bastrop and pretty much all over rural Texas, where they look and go, "Oh, you're doing a movie. How can oh. how can we be a part of that? <laughs> how could we would love to help?" And I'm not making fun. I'm saying it's just great. People want to come up and just we we'll bake you pies. So I need while ham you're salad. Shooting. It's beautiful. You, everybody, you over, run every, into uh, that everybody over fifty calls you, honey. Right. Oh, oh honey, <laughs> we'll get you and uh, sugar. Yeah. And you yeah. gotta love that. I love that. Sugar's Some people good. are annoyed by it. Yeah. Love and it. my favorite, which is bless his heart. <laughs> bless his heart. <laughs> but that can go both ways. That that's sometimes condescending, right? Yeah, right. Like, it's, it's, like he's an idiot. You're trying to figure out the heart. computer. Bless, bless your his heart. heart. <laughs> yeah, it's more often than not it is condescending. Which, yeah. by the way, is when you talk down to people. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's what that means? Oh. <laughs> I'm the only one that got that joke. Nice. No, we were all laughing because it, it, it happened about to you. you. Yeah. It happened on you. It was awesome. Uh, the other producer you keep referencing, of course, yes. is your lovely wife, Caroline. My right? lovely wife, yes, indeed. Yeah. The Moore Showers and our partner, John Holt Hall, out of Virginia. Um, we cowboyed up, and, and we're, you know, we're really optimistic going into it because so often – in that uh, trek from script to screen, things tend to be lost, and your vision exceeded the finished product. And in this case, what we wound up with is actually exceeding our vision. That's great. Best case scenario. Mm-hmm. So. And you're making a festival run with it at all? We've before, already done before the, it went to VOD. We did. Uh, we played in three festivals, and we won at all three. Wow. Which is in, just insane. And I saw some uh, video that you took it back to the old hometown, right? We did. We, uh, In fact, it had its world premiere at the Dallas International Film Festival. And it played at the Austin Film Festival. And then we just got back from the cinema on the bayou. I have no idea how I remembered mm-hmm. that. And that was in Lafayette, Louisiana. Hmm. Which I believe Louisiana is where Beast of the Southern Wild took place. Yeah, yeah. Is that correct? So, yeah. In, in, a, yeah. in an area called the Bathtub. And yeah. it was just a super poor Delta area. Again, the place... That just, I wouldn't know if it weren't for your movie. Same with uh, where your film take yeah. play, takes place. We had a lot of fun, and uh, you know, we broke the rule, they say, in show business, and I think we all know who they are. They is a reference to the Dick Van Patten family. <laughs> but they, <laughs> they uh, have made the rule that you don't use a child and you don't use an animal, and we oh, used both, and both were untrained. Uh, that piggy was Did untrained. I was going to ask you about the piggy, because I'm a big animal actor advocate i love it and uh piggy seemed very well trained that was a piggy's first movie 
It's all bribery. Oh, it's all you had to do. Yeah, jelly beans. Oh. Pig love jelly beans. And could <laughs> mop pig. up a bowl of beans like nobody's business. And corn, there's a scene in the movie. Yeah, he feeds where him corn. He feeds yeah. him corn, and it's like, and it's gone. gone. Yeah. And, As producer, uh, this has got to please you, right? Like a couple of jelly beans, and we got making a movie. Yeah, well, it's the first time I've ever been on a set, you know, going, um, we need the pig to hit his marks right. here. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and you're not talking about the Van Pattens this time. Ah, ah, very sing, sing, nice. Bing, bing, wing. Uh, that was what we call full circle yeah, in yeah, comedy. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Uh, how did you get the... Re- I love the relationship between the little boy and the pig. They were best friends. How'd that happen? Well, here's the deal. Jonathan has two actual pigs as pets. Oh, my God. That's so perfect. he is used to being around these pigs, and he's used to swimming with the pigs. And riding on the pig. The I whole, love well, you that. saw That's why he well, did it. I have a question yeah, about this swimming This is something pigs. that he's very comfortable with. That's great. I had always heard that I... That pigs on a boat were bad luck, and it's because when they're what? in the water. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang with me. Hang okay, with me. Okay. What is going on? We're I getting just, there. We're, okay. I we're, love we're, it. We're concerned about always heard, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah. I'm of the sea. Not a day sea. went by. I'm of the sea. Uh, that the pigs I'm are bad luck. <laughs> bad Boy, luck theory. on a boat. <laughs> I'm of the sea. <laughs> bad luck on a boat, and that the reason is when they when they get into the water, they kill themselves because when they dog paddle, they actually slit their throats with their hooves. And in this movie, you clearly have a big swimming around. This is so made up. That's crazy. Hey, How what you... what urban area did you live in with this legend? <laughs> Cleveland? Somewhere where there's no swimming and no water. I apparently. swear I heard that somewhere. Interesting. That there are I can't multiple imagine shots of swimming pig in this. Who says... Uh, you know, I was going to go to Vegas and bet a lot of money, but ever since I saw that pig in the boat, <laughs> no, you can't it just seems a, like bad luck. Can't take a pig Is that your tagline? You will believe a pig can swim? I think that's on the poster, right? <laughs> flutter. Flutter. When, pig swim. Pig can... when pigs swim. Flutter. When pigs swim. When pigs flutter. swim. Flutter. Paul, I apologize if we lost control. <laughs> no. no oh, these lead the way, amigo. Oh, we are. It happens. We're, we're much like the Muppet Show, Paul's yeah. Kermit, and we're all the other weirdos. Yeah. Just, just trying to put stage. on a show. Just and trying these to maniacs are shooting themselves out of cannons and stuff. <laughs> Singing with chickens. Telling pig stories. There's a really sweet moment in this movie that I wanted to, to recount. Oh, please. Where, uh, horrible. So so the young boy has glaucoma and mom makes uh, pot brownies as his medicine mm-hmm. and I thought there was this really real moment where he doesn't want to take his medicine yeah. which is a freaking brownie. <laughs> He's like, oh, I gotta do, I gotta eat the brownie. But because it's medicine, yeah. and yeah. children just so in, you know innately just re- rebel against anything that's supposed to be good for them. Right. I just, I thought that was such a sweet and true moment that I yeah, you, you would you. think he would just gobble it down yeah, it's since it's brownie. A, a brownie. But you know what and we, pot we, brownie. we didn't do is we never, ever delved into was he ever wasted? Was, was he ever stoned? thinking about that. Yeah. And I think I that was, was a good thing that. to yeah. stay away from. They never fed him enough. It was just enough to reduce the pressure that he was dealing with, with the glaucoma, and extend his, you know, his uh, wellness within that sickness, that dis-ease. Uh, but yeah, we never had him going like, whoa, you know, if there's a chance <laughs> I could get another brown. Much like you never hear me say that. <laughs> right now, you're not saying I, it. I, I could be high right now. Adam, you never know. How is the pressure on your eyes? Are you okay today? Pretty good right now. <laughs> and the last thing I would like to say, Glenn, is that the, the pacing of the movie is very, very unique, but very seemingly very, very deliberate and extremely even throughout the whole yeah. mm. the whole film. And and there's several movies out there that I it made me think of. One is The Good Shepherd, only because it is a slow burn. This movie is a slow burn from almost the first frame to the very last frame. Well, I think that it, was, it was intentional, intentional, for one thing. It was written that way. It was directed that way. But frankly, people move at a slower pace in mm-hmm. Texas. So it was representative of the environment in which the story unfolds. Yeah. She's just trying to get through life, and that's you're, what you're oh. watching. It's like as things pile up, you know, the kids. I feel so much problems, better about myself. Yeah, but she go was check really well cast. I like the lead actress. What was her name again? Lindsay Pulsifer. And She's great. we found her, I didn't, but Eric did, and Andy Cope, our co producer, they found her at the Dallas International Film Festival starring in a movie called The Oregonian. And then when they looked uh, further into her career, they found out that she was one of the stars of HBO's True Blood. Oh, cool. And Eric just was crazy nuts about the, the possibility that we might get her. And here's what's interesting. No matter what mega A-list star we might have had a shot at, I'll promise you, the biggest of big could not and would not have done a finer job in that role of Joe Lynn 
than Lindsay Pulsifer did. Um, we're so blessed to have had her accompany us. She was born and raised in Salt Lake City, as was Charles Halford. So we had two Salt Lake City uh, actors, and they came down early enough to basically to spend some time trying to figure out how to speak properly, mm-hmm. and both of them executed beautifully in the movie. But, uh, man, that film rocks because of those three actors, Lindsay and Jonathan and Charles. Her singing voice is beautiful, too. Indeed. Both of the actors. I love that they did their own singing. And Jesse. Jesse was great. Jesse Plemons, it yeah. doesn't get any better than that. Fantastic. His singing, his songwriting. Yep. And, and and until Flutter, I mean, he... He peeked into it. We got a we got a peek at his talent on Friday Night Live or uh, Friday Night Lights. He played uh, in a band, and uh, but this time he really got to do what he does. And I think that was one of the primary attractions for Jesse. His interest in doing Flutter was that. And for people who don't know who Jesse Plemons is, we have from time to time on the movie guys called him Fake Matt Damon. Yes, because he looks like Matt. Early Damon. on, he looked like Matt Damon, and he wasn't doing much. But yes. now Jesse Plemons, yeah. yeah, after Breaking Bad, I'm like, okay, everybody knows who Jesse Plemons is. We can't call him fake Matt Damon. Is he in anymore. Star Wars? Is he in Episode Seven? Oh, no, that was a rumor, I think. I don't think he's Yeah, in I don't it. think so. That's well, right. he looks like uh, Matt Damon with a little sprinkling of Ron Howard. Mm-hmm. Right? True. A little recessive gene in his hair. A little opie going on yeah. there, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Opie There's some opie going on, on. Just on enough. There. A pinch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a a well, pinch you know, of opie. A pinch of opie. It's just a pinch of opie. <laughs> Would in you like some opie on your Vegemite? <laughs> in Battleship, he was fake Matt Damon, but now in right. Flutter, you get to enjoy Jesse. Jesse, Jesse Plemons. There you yeah. go. So. I wonder if Jess, if uh, Matt Damon is ever referred to as fake Jesse Plemons. Yeah, I hope now, so. Now, as of now, as of Flutter. Oh. He's straight. referred to as the real Jesse Plemons. The real Jesse Plemons. <laughs> Fake Matt Damon, real Jesse Plemons. Uh, so once again, there's not going to be a, uh, a, a format that you can't find this movie on once it opens up. April 7th. That's Google Play. That's your Amazon. That's your iTunes. It's your Vu- Yeah, which is what? Viewbiquity. Which is what? I just love that word. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta find Try not to is. see it. It's really I, I, what we're saying. I feel like I I have some viewbiquity. And what's the... What's the <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's kind of brimming off of you right now. Is the okay. translation of that that you are capable of viewing things in more than one place simultaneously? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is that what uh-huh. ubiquity uh-huh. is? That makes sense. Check let's your phone quick. Check hey, your phone. With is it on your phone right now? <laughs> then, then the movie has ubiquity. You can watch it in all these different formats and all these different places. It has ubiquity. And if the that movie isn't has what it it's means, it's on ubiquity. I like it. Yeah. Trademark. Pat and Pat. All right, let's, let's go over the mammoth uh, Ugh, thing that oh, is wow. your career. Everybody. Okay. All right. Uh, the, pe- the people you've worked with, Stallone, po- Streep, Ford, <laughs> uh, Clooney, I mean, on and on and on, Ridley Scott, Eastwood, et cetera, et cetera. And you managed to weasel your way into the Star Trek universe, too. Mm, Look at you. Yeah, I did five episodes of that show. Well, four episodes in one movie. Generation. Have to tell a generation story. Oh, please. You have time for that? Please. You're on the, you're on the movie showcase. This Twist is, my arm. Uh, <laughs> this is a rarely known story, but we were shooting in 94, spring of 94. Mm-hmm. We were doing Star Trek Generations, which was the merging of the old cast and the new cast. And, yeah. of course, uh, William Shatner there is Captain Kirk. <laughs> and uh, so with this happened. The filming began right after the big Northridge earthquake. Mm. Oh. And I don't know if any of you were here at that time, but the ground was shaking unceasingly Mm. for about six weeks and this was just a couple of days later we started filming and the very first scene up in the film was an attack sequence and i was the uh, navigator of the enterprise b shatner was to my immediate left by about eight feet and david carson who's a lovely brit david spoke with us about the um, new gimbal which was part of the the uh, set which made the set shake violently (laughs) and so um we had a rehearsal where all the actors got on the set. And the reason they invented the gimbal was to keep one group of actors from going right and the others going left, which defies physics. So it created a uniformed response to a jolt of the ship. Mm -hmm. It was a great idea. And so in rehearsal, the power of the gimbal was revealed to us. One, let me repeat that, one actor missed the rehearsal. And that actor was none other than Captain Kirk himself. (laughs) And so when it came time to shoot... David Carson said, and action, and they started the scene, and about 30 seconds into it is the beginning of the attack sequence. He goes, and, and he gestured to the person operating the gimbal. He goes, and shake, just like that from off camera, and he hits that gimbal, and everyone knows, so no one freaks out except (laughs) Bill Shatner, (laughs) and Shatner thinks we're having a mega earthquake, (gasps) and that that quake... In his mind, 
that quake hurled him not over, did I say over, not over, <laughs> but rather through the railing, and Shatner goes airborne. I had the finest um, vantage point of oh anyone on the God. ship. Here comes William Shatner flying right in front of me, <laughs> smacks onto the deck, and everyone falls silent to await the, the result is, yeah. has he broken his neck? Did he break an arm? What's Have going on? Shatner. Right. First day of his shooting. His captain, right? first day. First day again. And so Bill Shatner looks up, and I don't pretend to do a great Shatner, but because I was there, I do it pretty well. It's he looks up. He is every shade of red. He, by the way, is wearing red. It's the red uniform. <laughs> and he looks up, and now when we know he's okay, everybody bursts out laughing. <laughs> the whole crew, everyone. And here's what Bill does. He goes, four. 27 years the ship has never moved, but I miss <laughs> one frigging rehearsal. <laughs> it's a great story. And somewhere in the vault at Paramount Pictures, oh, they have that moment of, sh of Shatner flying, flying through the air. Flying Shatner oh, footage. Oh, my God. That's, that's an so amazing I was Shatner's honored to be there in that moment. Sure. You're kind of like in the Sulu type seat, right? Yeah, it's yes, there, right? yes. Yeah, watching Shatner fly by. Yes. So the gimbal was created because yelling, left! Right. <laughs> that's it. Was yeah. it working? That was, that's right. that's 1960s thinking. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's so Shatner, which is just a great one thing to say about a lot one. of stuff. Yes. That, that's <laughs> so Shatner. Now, you were in a number of movies that I put in my top ten every I do a top ten every Oh, wow. Year. Yeah. Oh, you were May I guess them. that Black Hawk Down was one of those? Black Hawk Ooh. Down was one of those. Mm. Now, that's, that's one of a series of movies that, because I'm a movie guy and I go to a ton of movies, I will never go to Africa. <laughs> Thank you, movies. Black Hawk Down, Hotel Rwanda, Blood Diamond. Not going. Sally Struthers. <laughs> I mean, these movies have convinced So they have discouraged they've you? They've discouraged It doesn't look like that. it's going well over So there. if they waved a rather <laughs> large chunk of change in front of you, would it change uh, that discouragement? Right. Now, wait a second. That's a different thing. I wasn't Are aware you saying that was you wouldn't on. go there on vacation? Because uh, I'll tell you, right before I was cast in Black Hawk Down, I had stated uh, like two weeks before to a friend, there is no way that I... No, no we are on the same page, you and I said, there's absolutely no way on God's green earth that I will ever go to Africa to shoot a movie. I'm sorry, how much? Exactly. <laughs> and off we went. Yeah. <laughs> I can off respect that. I can respect yeah. that. Yeah. But maybe, Paul, that's good. In your future, you have... An opportunity, right. much you like turn that. Me around I was Ridley right? Scott. Ridley is the greatest director I've ever worked with. Yeah. And every day, he was like, every day he was like, this. He was like, let's take a look at the drawings. We got the drawings, oh. and we went into his trailer where he sat down. He was ever so prepared, and he sat there with his drawings, with a pencil and paper, and oh. he was just—he knew exactly what he wanted Love with it. the shot. I've never seen a director who had a clearer cut vision of what they wanted to create and man it shows on screen. Yep. I mean just unparalleled experience to work with him. Now I want to uh, challenge you guys. I want to see if mm -hmm. any of you might need to uh, spend some time in movie jail. Oh, okay. Movie Interesting. Jail. I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to call a little call to action and see uh -oh. have any of you seen the movie 84 Charlie Mopic. Ooh. I have not. I know the one you're talking about. No. I know you are in it and I have not seen it. It is, it, it is tied for my one of my favorite two films, the other one being Black Hawk Down of, of the films I've been in. And it is a movie that uh, very Charlie. few people, it's the number 8-4, mm -hmm. and the uh, military um, number, yeah, the military call, which is Charlie Mopic. And Mopic was short for motion picture. Oh, and it cool. referenced oh. the guys who would go out into the field huh with the teams and document the missions. Oh, wow. And it was uh, written and directed by Patrick Duncan. Uh, we traveled to Sundance, and it had its premiere at Sundance in 1989, January of 89, and we were second runner-up to Sex, Lies, and Videotape. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, they won that year, and but, man, we had a great time. And that film did not get one bad review. Everyone is nuts about it. And one of the screenings in particular, we had 500 Vietnam vets. It was an all vet wow. screening wow. at Park City. I've never seen so many tears in a theater. And these gentlemen, I mean, there's nothing light about this. It was one of the heaviest and yet most beautiful moments of my life, most rewarding as an actor, where these this long line of vets came up one at a time, offering handshakes and hugs, and they would look into our eyes and say, Thank you so much for getting it right. 
Oh, it's wow. about time that someone got it right. Well, it was gotten right because it was directed and written by a vet. Uh, and someone I remembered in one of the interviews, they referred to him as a former Vietnam vet. You're only a former Vietnam vet if you're dead. Mm. It's tough to be living if you're a former vet. And um, he would not allow several big studios, wanted his movie, and they wanted to use their fancy crane shots and their music tracks. And he said, you know, I watched my buddies killed, and we did not have anyone there with a violin at the time. Mm. So the answer is going to be no. And I really admire that, that he passed on every major offer, decided that he would do the film with New Century Vista, and they let him do it his way. It is a must-see movie. Wow. There's something mm. to be said about that, the idea that somebody's able to take their vision and get it to screen without having to compromise for suits. Yeah. That is that is when real art happens. I understand working in the system and trying to make a profit, but that is so passion. When passion gets on the screen, you see it. I feel like that's how your movie is, too. Uh, you know what? Flutter. If you hadn't just said it, I would have, ah. because I was sitting there waiting, <laughs> trying to be polite, let you finish up, but I wanted to say that the only film, truly, that I've ever been on that had an identical vibe devoted to outcome was Flutter. Mm -hmm. And we mm. made it in the same guerrilla style yep. with the exact same standards, and we would not leave until we got it. And we would know. I mean, we would sit and just go, that's it, and mm -hmm. cut print, and then we'd move on. But uh, the same heart that made 84 Charlie Mopic was the same heart that we made Flutter with. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. So Transformers, no. Just no you're <laughs> <laughs> you know I have a story for all of them. Oh, that right? Right? <laughs> well, why not? Well, Let's go to Transformers. I think Michael Bay probably Oh, by the way, we've moved out of now, my top ten list. Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> you want to no. jump no, back to No, just by that? going to Transformers, Are, we've done. Now, I forget who you play in Transformers. Are you a military? Uh, yes, I am. I played, how many, how I played many, two characters. I did three films. I've done five for Michael, but three of the Transformer films. I did not do the fourth one. But in the first one, I play a character uh, whose name is General, uh, excuse me, Colonel Sharp. And Michael called me at home. He calls me Dude. <laughs> He's the only one in my life he seems refers like a dude to me as dude. dude. And he says, Dude, um, you want to do the sequel? And I said, To what? I really didn't know because we'd done three movies together. Hey, I knew this Pearl much. Harbor. Call me a genius, but I knew it wasn't the sequel to Pearl Harbor because <laughs> right? there wasn't one. But, but I said, uh, To what, Michael? And he said, Transformers, dude. I Dude. said, yeah, I know you're kidding. He goes, no, I'm not I'm not pulling your leg at all. We start in two weeks, and I'd love to know if you want to be a part of it. And I said, well, of course the answer is yes, but Michael, could you just tell me this one thing? Does it in any way bother you that I died in the first time? Ah. Right? And he said, Maybe you no. shouldn't have reminded That's him. what I like about no. Michael Bay. No, it doesn't it, matter doesn't to him. Care. It didn't matter. He said, no, it doesn't. Besides, Glenn, we're going to change your, your character's name. <laughs> Awesome. Why didn't I think awesome. of that? He took a true conversation. This is why he's it. in charge, Glenn. This, this is, is why says, he's the director. He that's says, and we're going to change your rank. Great. Hey, that'll <laughs> fool him. That's great. <laughs> that'll that's fool him. Can't it. be the same guy. I love it. So he says, are you going to be home? Are you home right now? And I said, I'm right here in L.A. He said, are you going to be at your house for the next hour? Because I'm having a script messengered to you. And they sent the script. He said, I think you'll like your new rank and your new name. And when I looked at that script <laughs> and opened it up, the new character's name was General Morshower. Oh! So I was a general, and he named hey, the character after me. Hey, wait a minute. That's your me. name, Glenn. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> All right. Now, wait a minute. This morning. All my, that from my, my friend, Michael Bay. <laughs> this that morning, my friend was visiting from Calabasas. She brought her kids up to Universal, so I went to meet her at Universal. Quit name dropping, Karen. I'm just saying. I went to Universal <laughs> to have lunch with her and then go off to do something else. But uh, we saw you this morning on the Q line. Oh, you went on the ride. Uh, too. Yes. Yeah. In, in California in, uh, and Cal Florida. They have um, Glenn. You'll be waiting in the line, and he'll be telling you what's going on. and gives you all the information. It's so exciting to be standing next to her, who I haven't seen in like 10 years. And I go, oh, yeah, that guy's going to be in my garage tonight. Uh. <laughs> She's like, what is happening? Well, you know what? It's the same deal. And Michael, awesome. to, to put the bow tie on that story, Michael actually called and said, dude, it's Transformers time again. I said, Michael, I know it isn't now because we just finished three mm -hmm. and you're not doing four for at least another year because they usually wait a year, shoot it, and then it's two years later when it comes out so that they're alternating every other year. And he goes, no, man, not the movie, the ride. Oh. I said, the ri what are you talking about? He goes, we're putting uh, Transformers in 3D at Universal Studios, 
and uh, Steven Spielberg and I decided that you should be the mascot for the ride. Oh, so, so they cool. paid me to bark orders yeah. at people <laughs> while they're waiting in line yeah. talking about the Decepticons and the Autobots. And now here's yeah. the exciting part, and, and uh, cool. this may be a bit controversial. Have you gone on the ride? I have. Do you like Many it? times. I like it. I really think it's fun. No, it's, it's a great ride. The more you go on it, the more I like it. Do the At Tokyo first, Drift cars scary. transform to anything? We, no. We've not only been on the ride at Universal in Hollywood several times, but uh, my wife and I have flown to Orlando oh. where we got to, I actually got to open the ride in both cities. And That's I thought that fun. would be up there with a group of dignitaries. And I met Steven Spielberg that morning and he goes, no, the stage is yours alone. So well, please the, open the ride. You're in charge. Clearly, everybody gets to know you. We know that there's a mission, and we have to go get the um, the all spark. It's very important. Yeah, but how cool is that? <laughs> and I mean, New York, uh, New York. Oh, hey, hey. Welcome aboard, recruit. You oh, think no. you have what it takes to be a part of Nest? Oh, you think no. you're some kind of hero? Well, you may get your chance. If there's one thing we need out here, it's live bodies. There you go. That's right. sweet. Hey. Be- getting people hyped up for the yeah. opening, right? So that was uh, that was a really cool deal, and the ride has been very successful. And uh, sign up is kind of surreal when you go in, and and uh, Universal signed us to a twenty five year deal. So that ride will be playing until I, I shot it when I was fifty three. So it will be running until I am seventy eight. Wow. That's just weird. That's a it's weird. great job. I have Good a question. You. You're eternal. You, eight you... inches is the answer. Oh, okay. No, I was eight inches from the goal line when I fumbled the football in the state championships. Where did your head go? No, no. I was Come on, say, Bart. Mine was you... immediately dirty. I just immediately. wanted to know how do you how you shot that when you were 53 when you're only 42 now. Uh, hey, nice. Although the, although so you the stepped top, on a big compliment. The top of my head just celebrated its 88th birthday. Um, have you ever been in line and had some and just you know some kids just looks at you, oh, you and course. it's like wait and a like, second <laughs> and then you hug and take Aww. pictures and it's beautiful and they're that's like cool. that's you man do you ever just you. do this you just go shh don't say anything <laughs> i do yeah. no up one behind will believe them. you you're on a mission <laughs> <laughs> just hand, hand him an envelope to open and later. then when you're feeling sarcastic and a little nasty someone goes hey man that's that's you, son of a gun. That's you, and you go, yeah. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Yeah. But I don't hey, that's do that more that often. condescending yeah, thing you were like, talking about, right? Yeah. I'm picking yeah. up on this. Now, let, please, let's go back to my top ten <laughs> yes. and action movies. Is this an eight-hour show? X-Men, 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 X-Men. 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 Only, X-Men only first when class. it's good. <laughs> oh, X-Men first, in my top ten uh, and a big action movie. Um, I long for now the younger class to be in every X-Men movie from here on out. I certainly hope they are. Uh, that movie was fantastic. But only one of those has Kevin Bacon in it, and that is seen as with Glenn. And I love Kevin Bacon so yeah. much in X-Men First Class. Two scenes with Two Kevin scenes. in that film. Yeah. With the wonderful villain, Kevin Bacon. That was one of his best roles in years. Oh, and up for it. He's so up for much. any role that's amazing. You know? so... Between that and River Wild, your six degrees are all taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, Kevin Bacon actually blew me up in that film, which is pretty cool. Yes. Yes, yeah, he is he exploded did. by yeah. Kevin Bacon. Exploded. Anytime he can get killed by Kevin Bacon. In in a tuxedo also with Kevin in the early part of the film, which was pretty cool. And Kevin is dressed so well on that ship. Yeah, He's he such is. a Bond villain. Mm-hmm. And he even has the, the submarine that pops out of the uh, the boat uh, later yeah, on. Yeah, He's right. a complete Bond villain in that movie. But everything goes it. south <laughs> because he has a pig on the submarine. So it's lots of bad luck. Right, Bart? A pig named Vegemite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also in my top me? tens, Moneyball, yeah. uh, Good Night and Good Luck. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Good Night and Good Luck was Strathair. both films phenomenal. I didn't say that. But no. uh, Good Night and Good Luck is the only black and white movie I've ever done, and that oh. was, was kind of mm. cool. As a kid, I wanted to be on the Andy Griffith Show as Opie's you know, long-lost brother, but that didn't happen. And uh, But, yeah, Good Night and Good Luck. Good Lord. David Strathairn, amazing. He was. Film. Yeah. And let's talk for two seconds about 24, because we've oh, seen... We love 24. Arguably the greatest show in the history of television. You're right. Mm-hmm. Well, when a... Mo- when a right. Yeah. Yeah. If it's the the fifth season wins the Emmy, I mean, it just shows that a show gets that much better as it goes along, which is a rare thing, I think. And it also earned uh, Aaron Pierce his, um, well, me, Glenn, my second on-screen kiss of my career. The first <laughs> one was when I was 16. And this one, I simply leaned in and gave Jean Smart a peck on the side of her face and said, thank you. I 
I loved yeah. you in that because when he started falling in love with the first lady, mm-hmm. oh my God, it was killing me because it just made everybody go, I want him to protect me and take care of me. You know, it was a really, yeah. it was. Everybody starts going, oh my God, he has to be my secret service. And <laughs> I, sold, <laughs> I sold my wife on uh, the importance of method. Oh, acting oh, I see. During that. Yes. And she said, whatever rehearsal time you need um, <laughs> copulating with Jean, yeah. uh, then please help? just take that opportunity. <laughs> because smart. I know it'll be for artistic reasons. Well, you want it to be as close to Flutter and those kind right. of shows. Listen to Glenn. Listen to Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Very wise man. So when you have those scenes, I'll yes. be like, well, Glenn's wife said it was okay. How do you feel as an actor the transition to now appearing in a bunch of video games is uh, obviously it's treating you well. Uh, what do you? I love how, that how when you do that we get a flyby. Yeah. Uh, it's just awesome. Cue the flyby. <laughs> uh, you know I've done a, a bunch of video games. I started out my first one to do was the Twenty Four video game, and then uh-huh. went into Call of Duty. Did uh, two Call of Duty games and Battle uh, Battleship. Um, it, it, it's great fun. I mean, you go into a voice booth, and if you if you have the ability to allow to me and I teach acting I've been an acting teacher for 28 years it's all about what can you allow what can you allow yourself to step into so that for a few brief moments it is your reality you're not pretending it is it is your reality it's your life and then speak, no joke speak from that place and if you do that well they'll let you do it in front of a camera or in front of a microphone and it's so interesting that people go well that you know that just, it just looks like it'd be easy <laughs> looks like it'd be easy well, you know what? It may be easy, but getting the one to be chosen to do it, yeah. that stuff ain't easy. That's the job. That's a lot of work. That's the job. The audition mm-hmm. is the job. Was there ever mocap involved? Did you do that? I'm sorry? Did you ever do motion capture? I okay. have. I did motion capture in, uh, which is not called Battlefield. Battle Battlefield, yes, in Battlefield. Yeah. We did that, and they hooked the little, you know, balls up to you all over and you're you covered in ping pong balls it's uh, i was nice i was the only time i've ever had balls in my face oh, uh, oh. oh. documented uh, documented that we know about <laughs> on film right. yeah. oh. now, now are you are you a, are you a military guy in he's the, still in, upset with me because uh, of that comment. no i just are I'm we just, gonna be okay i'm just buds? impressed i'm impressed that uh kevin bacon blew you i just you know oh. hey blew him up blew him up oh, blew him up oh, oh. 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 he hasn't done that with many actors no he he he, he uh, he pulls out a grenade and it explodes into this ball of energy and then Kevin Bacon uh, takes his hands and he makes this little tiny ball of energy and then he puts his balls in Glenn's mouth. I don't know why you, <laughs> right, why right. Do you find this dirty. I mean, right. you make anything well, dirty. I'm telling you what's happening in X-Men. <laughs> if, if, I may, if I may use that... No, I'm serious. If I may use that as a segue to talk about... No, I'm serious. I have a great character that's coming up, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And his name is Gerald, and Gerald is the choir director for little Northeast Texas Baptist Church in in a movie called Bug. And I'm I'm fixing to French fry the circuitry of people's... uh, Opinions of what it is that Glenn does and what he doesn't do. And Please tell me this is true. Are you going to be hilarious? Please tell me this is, is true. It true. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. Bug. But if you look on IMDb, you'll see it. It's, yeah. called, IMDb. it's called Bug, and that's the way I sound. Oh, He's, like, He's like, okay, let's sing a song now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to be in Gary, that choir. That's Gary fantastic. Floyd is going to be very proud of me. Oh, that is good. <laughs> yeah. oh, he's gonna love Gary's going to love me for that. Gary's a mutual I friend, friend many, of the show. Gary, hi, Gary. How many characters Glenn has cycled through in the course of the evening? Oh, he's have been like 12 people tonight. This is awesome. <laughs> I love it. On or, and off camera. But are you hilarious in Buck? Have you been hilarious in I know you're in a movie called Delta Farce. I didn't see it. It sounds like a comedy. You ever get to be broad and just yeah, oh, rip yeah, it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so weird. That's why I kind of fell into this. I don't want to call it a trap, but let's call it a trap <laughs> of, of of doing a lot of these authoritative figures. And someone said, you know, <laughs> yeah. I've been asking so many interviews. They ask, do you mind being typecast? No, I mind being not cast. <laughs> and so typecast, there's a huge future in it. I mean, we put our kids through college in it. We bought our homes with it. It's, it's, it's Plural. been wonderful. Well, we, we did. I wasn't, <laughs> they had a lot of kids. Um, <laughs> you got to put them somewhere. <laughs> well, you I've, do I've realize said this about, the man's eight inches. I've said about this, this about Dennis Franz, the smartest man in Hollywood. He said, you want me to play a cop? Sure, I'll do that the rest of my life. And that's been my motto yep. until recently because I thought, you know what? It's time to... It's interesting that I started by branching out, then refined it, dialed it into one area where they worked me all the time, yeah. and now we're in a position to branch it out again. That's so about cool. 18 months ago, I decided no more military roles, <gasps> no more chief of police, not for life, oh, okay. but <laughs> for, for this chapter. 
And so I've had the most exciting 18 month stretch ever playing very different roles oh, in great. every single thing I've done. And we got seven films on the uh, on the runway here, very getting cool. ready. All of them come out in 2014. Uh, I'm not unhappy about it. 16 or 15, because 14's over. Over. What's that? You said 2014. <laughs> oh, maybe I should get in the year that we're in. <laughs> yeah, 2015. 15, 2015. Oh, good. Thank you. We can edit that out. Don't worry. About All right, but listen, we don't have time to talk about Under Siege or uh, oh. Air Force One or The Island or oh. Godzilla 98. Oh. Sorry, Adam. Uh, nor do we have time to talk about Dukes of Hazard or oh, uh, I actually CSI. Like I liked that. I liked that movie. No, no, this was the, the, the TV, TV show. show. TV I show. I like that even TV better. Show. Yeah, exactly. Show. Or oh, great. Milton wow. C. Hardcastle, a <gasps> retired judge from the Los Angeles Superior what? Court. Awesome. Mark McCormick, an ex race car driver turned thief, was Hardcastle's <sighs> last case. Where did you get that? Yeah, Hardcastle and Heaven. The Brian TV Heaven. Heaven. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so Hardcastle wait, wait, McCormick. Get to go to the song. Hold on. Oh, wait. Oh, the song's sorry. rocking here. Oh, I don't know how to fast forward. I can't believe this. He's crazy. That's what happened. You were in that series. Do you remember? I guest that starred on Drive! <laughs> That's the song, right? Yeah, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Drive. Oh, you want me to keep playing? Uh, cases Sorry, I want to hear the, the, the music. Well, you know, courtroom on technicalities. <laughs> I had I had spent several years working with uh, Brian Keith on Family Affair. So Maybe great. you saw me oh. as a kid uh, with my uh, sissy and Buffy and all of that. Is that for real? No, it's <laughs> okay, okay. Family <laughs> Affair. Come on. No, but it was a little redheaded boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was that one dude. Yeah, you remember? I what do. was his name? Johnny. What's Johnny. Johnny Whitaker. Johnny Whitaker. Holy yeah. geez, this that is, one came out of the archives. This is what heaven sounds like to me. Yeah! Was this Hardcastle McCoy? Yeah! Sure. yeah. Theme song. Yeah. Play, play just a good old boy from Dukes of Hazard. Oh, wait, now you're making requests? I don't know. <laughs> you don't have the Dukes theme. I, I can the sing Dukes it for you. It's not it's a good old boy. I just want to mention you guys are the coolest fans if you're still watching. <laughs> Like, this is a very long show. I love it. It's great. <laughs> there's, but there's, look at, we're cutting stuff out. We can't talk about Millennium. Can't talk about Alias, ER, West Wing. We played a. West Wing, I do need to fault. say one thing about that. the president again. No stories, but I want to tell you Martin Sheen, arguably the coolest guy on the planet. Ooh. My dad was dying while we were filming it, and I asked Martin if he would do a videotape tribute to my father because it was his birthday that week. And um, I, I have to tell the story super fast, but. We had been filming for 15 hours. He said yes at 6.30 in the morning. Love to do it for you, Glenn. And it was the coolest video ever because not only did we we fill the uh, video with stars greeting him uh, with uh, happy birthday greetings, but specifically uh, talking smack about my dad. <laughs> Every one of them telling stories that there's oh. no way on God's green earth they could know, like about a mole on an ex-girlfriend's butt cheek, <laughs> stuff like that. So all of them really roasted my dad. And the last person to do it was Martin Sheen, and we couldn't get a window of opportunity because we were either both filming or he would be filming and I'd be off camera or vice versa. So at the end of the night, I watched. They signed Martin out at 9.30, starting at 6.30 in the morning, so 15 hours, and I lost him. Shame, because he would have done it. He'd have been happy, and I didn't want to bug him during lunch. At 10.30, they signed me out. An hour later, I walk off the stage, soundstage, go outside martin is sitting in his truck and he turns to me and he says so buddy we gonna shoot this thing or what oh and i started crying i did i started crying because i said you waited and he said this and i'll never forget it that's why it, it's worth bringing this up he says buddy i gave you my word and the moment a man's word ceases to mean something that man has no value in this world and uh, oh, wow. so martin and i went back in on the sound stage shot his uh, tribute to my dad, and I cut it uh, the following day in Dallas, showed it to him three days later, and my dad bawled all the way through it. And when he saw Martin Sheen telling a story about a sexual encounter <laughs> that he had had, uh, <laughs> it, it just floored him, and he died a short time later. Oh. And, so and Martin Sheen killed your dad? Is really the moral of the story. It's oh, horrible. Please, That's if wonderful. you have a loved one you'd like to keep alive, <laughs> don't let Martin Sheen do a tribute video to them. That's we can't let him near him. Thank you, Martin. Oh, that's so awesome. Wow. That's Isn't a, that cool? That's, that's an true. amazing philosophy to have to work in the business that he works in. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he's the real deal. Anyone who doesn't think or anyone who thinks these causes he gets arrested for, he is the real deal. And uh, we recently saw him in Dallas. He was there doing a one-man show, and he asked me to bring my mom down early before the play. Oh. I love you, Martin Sheen. Oh, well, a couple more things awesome. in that vein uh, before we get on to the, the final parts of the show. 
uh, talking about philosophies, you subscribe to one and you uh, travel around the country doing motivational speaking for uh, something you call the Extra Mile. Yes, indeed. Please explain. We need inspiration here. The Extra Mile started out as an audition mastery course right here in uh, Los Angeles uh, 28 years ago. Uh, I have always been blessed with the ability to book work with um, with an elevated booking ratio. I work a lot and so I was encouraged by my agent to teach actors how to book work, not how to perform, mm. but how to have a presence in the room that magnetically draws people to you to say, we need you on our show. Yeah. It turns out it's quite teachable, it's formulaic, mm. and it's all about living an aligned and a balanced life so that you are, and I'm keeping this brief, but you are literally a walking celebration. Mm. You don't look like you're enduring life, you're celebrating life. And when someone who is a, a confirmed celebrator enters a room, the room changes. And then the work begins. But when you enter the room, they're already rooting for you based on energy, based on magnetism. And he encouraged me after teaching it in L.A. and changing a lot of people's lives, a lot of people began working frequently. He said, you know, I think this will play on the road. I think you've got a program you can take on the road. And one night in Houston, Texas, everything changed because a good old boy kind of a heavy set fella sauntered up to me and he said hey glenn and i knew i loved him because it took him two syllables to say my one <laughs> syllable glenn. name but it's a true story he says hey glenn and i'm gonna look at you Paul. i'm gonna look at you just like he did to me he said my granddaughter told me that if you were ever anywhere near the zip code of houston texas that i was supposed to come hear you speak and as you can see I have done that. That's <laughs> exactly the way he did it. And I cracked up. And he says, son, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You weren't up there talking about acting at all tonight. What you were talking about was love. What you were talking about was power. What you were talking about was connection and celebration. And he opened his jacket and said, I'm just wondering if you might come talk to my people at Exxon. And that man changed my life. Wow. So all of a sudden, I started entering corporate America. And I did check with him. I said, so how would you like me to tailor it, hone it, and refine it so that it speaks to your employees at Exxon? And here's what he said. He said, son, I love this. I love Texans, the way they talk. He said, son, <laughs> you don't need to change a damn thing. You come and you do what you did on that stage tonight. They're going to scoop you up like good ice cream. <laughs> and uh, word of mouth started and I started hopping around, and now about every 10 days, I'm on a plane to fly somewhere in the U.S., which is why we've settled in, in the central part of the states in, in Texas, because it makes it a little easier to go left or right from there, and I'm speaking to large audiences everywhere. I'm living the dream. I love my life. I want to say I am in love with my life, and I love helping other people. That is the primary reason for which I live and acting is great because it keeps butts in those seats. But I'm a celebrator, and my gift is to help other people learn how to celebrate instead of endure their lives. That's fantastic. That is, really right? that is fantastic. Glenn, Glenn, do you have any pamphlets you can leave behind? I know. Actually, I'm to take your class. Actually, we do have. Uh, <laughs> we did bring <laughs> you guys a DVD. I'm in. Oh, oh no oh, kidding? Yes. We really did. Oh, wow. That is you did bring perfect. one, did you not? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a, we'll give it to you before we leave oh, tonight. Oh, fantastic. Nice. Thank I mean, you. That's cool. Uh, you know, we, just That's a few cool. minutes before the show, you told a couple stories in, in Paul's living room, and you have an amazing story sense, but you have just such an inspirational vibe about you. Mm. Like, I felt better walking out of Paul's living room to come record the show <laughs> just from like a few minutes. You just have a whole way about you. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you. I take that as a very high compliment. <laughs> and there is, a, there is a record for uh, the length of marriage you've had. For, yeah. long, for people who live in Los Angeles. <laughs> well, and again, it's got to be a record, I right? would attribute that. We've been married 36 years. We got married when we were 19 and 18. Now we're 55 and 54. Uh, but we communicate. And there's here's the deal. There's never a reason. I don't care who you are, what you say. There's never a reason to yell at your partner. That's a childish tendency to say, I need to be heard. You don't have to yell. If you've got an issue, tell me. I'm an adult. I'm capable of hearing what your issue is. Let's just talk. And I'll, I'll close with regard to the extra mile this way. In life, we were misled because we were taught that it's about what you want. It is not about what you want. It is not about what you want. It's about what you want most because that's what you'll get behind. So often people want so many things, mm -hmm. and they wind up interfering with one another. 
So you can want haagen ice cream and you can want a gold medal, but haagen ice cream is not the way to train to get that gold medal. So at some point you have to say, what do you want most? And if I'm coaching you to be in the 400-meter relay, I'm going to look at you and say, Princess, you got to set the haagen down if you meant it when you said, please coach me on winning the gold medal. That's not how we get there. So you got to clarify, what do you want most in life? And then make sure that your current choice-making habits are congruent with that intended outcome. If they're not, you ain't getting there. Those Glenn the Moore Shower, the real Dr. Phil. This is the greatest. Yes. How do you not have a show yet? And we watch Dr. Phil religiously. I love Dr. <laughs> Phil. I love Dr. Phil for the like? very thing you like? said about the scoop of ice cream. Those little sayings that the Texans have are the best part of Dr. Colloquialisms. Phil. Colloquialisms. Yeah. Yes. They're I very can't condescending. say that. Shut up. <laughs> but you know what? what's interesting is from the outside looking in, a lot of times it's not valued. But I tell you what. When they're in that audience, when we're in a big ballroom and we have six, 700 people in there, mm-hmm. uh, my largest audience to date was last summer at the Ontario Convention Center, and I had 4,900 wow. people. But the idea is when they're in there, they're pot committed. They are, they are seriously buckled in and ready to rock. It's a very different situation. And I have always my whole life admired people who, who really work on their lives. They work on them. It's an event when they get up in the morning – they're here to make a difference. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a pretty good spot. That's and cool. the movies just keep butts in the seats. Right. So it's great. Oh, that's so cool. I'm in a better place from before this uh, show. Exactly. I, I'm inspired. I'm in a better place oh, than great. five minutes ago. Is inspiration Pretty allowed? Is, is that okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like oh I just goodness. met Tom Cruise. So real quick, uh, what is, we ask this of every guest who comes on sure. the show, yeah. what's your favorite movie of all time? Since we're talking about Boy, movies. you know, I won't say it's a hard, but, but there's so many, like I want to say a tie, but I, I would say, can I say two people have gotten away with that before okay so <laughs> what Becca so Bateau was cute a, she did there's three. a leaning towards saying the Shawshank Redemption mm. uh, but right up there with that I am old school baby and I loved Cool Hand Luke oh um. Interesting pairing, yeah. those two movies. You yeah. know, you could even watch those as a double feature. They would yeah, definitely yeah, you could. go with that. They what do you guys think for two. prison movies? <laughs> what we have here <laughs> is failure to communicate. <laughs> now, li- little Luke here, he wants it that way. <laughs> Remember him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty all cool. The, all the egg eating and everything. Yeah. That's George a hard Kennedy. Movie. What's George this? Kennedy won Best Supporting Actor for that. Yeah, that role. What's the song? Uh, the uh, the Jesus song. What's the uh, song they sing in that? I oh, used to have I, a boss that used to sing that around the office. All that plastic Jesus or I oh, God, don't what's the remember. Song? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, and then I, I just went to a reference I can't support, a, but it's a hilarious. I just screening went to a screening of, <laughs> of Shawshank recently. Twentieth anniversary. Hard to, oh my hard to believe, God. right? Wow. Yeah. Instant classic. And then right? what's yeah. in, oh yeah. What's yeah. interesting for me, and it's part of that uh, fun part of being an actor, is when someone who you screen hate which would be the warden, winds up becoming a very dear friend. Yeah. So Bob Gunton, who played the warden in Shawshank, was, uh, had a running role on 24, 24 with us. Yeah. Huh. So we got to be buddies. And it's so cool. weird to be friends with the warden of Shawshank. <laughs> but there was nobody better than President Logan. That oh, guy I was love the President best. Logan. In terms Please of, tell me in the terms of characters name. you love to hate. Yeah, and, yeah. and the actor name. What is Gregory his? Itzen. Gregory oh, Itzen, he that's was fantastic. right. fantastic. Oh, man. Yeah, Greg personally is just an angel, and he's he's all hippied out. It's really cool. He's got multiple piercings on his <laughs> ears, but he's such a, can we say the D word on the internet? Uh, douchebag? Well, let's go with that. I was going to say something else. <laughs> no, no. What is but, he? What, so go ahead. No, he's such a dick on the show. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Yeah, he's not a douchebag in the show. And he's he is many a levels dick. of dick. He comes up with all different ways. Dick, yeah. Which I think is why it was a okay with everyone that I fell in love with his wife. Yeah. It was like, it was oh, like was do her. Yeah. Do her. Yeah, that's we what the audience used to say. He was so sniveling. It was so oh. much fun to watch him. God, and that's when they won the Emmy. Yes. The year when he rose Season to Season five. Yeah. So. All right. So uh, let, we can do a real quick round of this. What did you see this week? Uh, what did you see this week? Well, I'm going to say flutter and pass it on. Yeah. Next, that's all I saw, man. That's I had a busy I week. It's well, I work I actually work up at Universal Studios Hollywood. Oh wow! Uh, it, yeah, in the park. So uh, I uh, it's been spring break, so it's been swamped. Haven't been out to the movies outside of flutter. So I know Bart, you saw something. Right? Well, I did see flutter, but I also saw uh, Mission Impossible two, awesome. and I ha- had my own personal too soon moment because I didn't remember that the, m- the opening of that movie is. A hey, pilot. Andy, before you start talking. <laughs> Cruise news. Oh yeah. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Show me the money. All right. 
<laughs> Bart's weekly look at what's up with Tom Cruise. Uh, so I didn't realize that the beginning of Mission Impossible 2 opens with a pilot setting a plane onto autopilot and crashing it into the mountains. And I literally had my own too soon moment in my living oh, room. Wow. Like, look, movie from 20 years ago. <laughs> it's a little too soon. I don't want to watch this. But wow. the movie itself is really not that good. Oh, it's, it? but it's batshit insane. There's nothing it else is, like it. It is nutty. But you, it's interesting to see how they... I thought the first one was very charming and I enjoyed it. And then yeah. this one is just such a letdown. And then the third one says, look, okay... We had a lot to make up for in the number two, so we're going to go ahead and really knock this one out of the park. So, But, like, the the, the motorcycle foo oh. and just all the craziness well, and all the, the doves. It's the most just The first time it started ripping movie. face off. John there's there's off. doves, yeah. and what cracks me up is that it's all set in the exotic locale of Sydney, Australia. Right? <laughs> like, and almost Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, uh, Doug Ray Scott Doug Ray is Scott. the villain. And yeah. it's funny because, what I the, first of all, Sydney, nothing against Sydney, but it's just not an, an exotic locale for a spy movie. And then the thing I also noticed is that like all the villains, villains drive Taurus, tr- Ford Tauruses. <laughs> it really detracts from the movie when your villain's yeah. not driving a black Mercedes <laughs> or, 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 wow. or like a Cadillac SUV. It's a Ford Taurus. Are they at least new? No. Oh, and they're powder tragic. blue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. All the cars in Live and Let Die, I did a rewatch recently in Live and Let Die, mm-hmm. are AMC. Yes. It yeah, they like are. an AMC the one that does Maverick. That, <laughs> does that flip, right? That's a yeah. jump flip. It's a, but it's like, it's like a what pacer. does a Bond movie have any business having a American Motor Corporation Thank cars you. in it? Why is it in Ford Haiti? Taurus <laughs> in Mission Impossible. Speaking yeah. of Bond movies, I in the last year of his life, I wound up becoming buds with Jaws. <gasps> Richard, Richard Keel. Keel? Keel. Richard that's a, Keel. That's amazing. Big fan. Because uh, we do a lot of the uh, Comic-Cons, mm-hmm. and Richard Keel does them regularly. And I just thought, hey, how good is your life? Your buddies with Jaws. That is <laughs> awesome. My, one of my favorite movies with Jaws. Now I'm buddies with Jaws. <sighs> but sadly, Richard Keel keeled over. Oh. oh, oh I don't want to. Too soon. Too, too soon. Wow. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Richard's family. Oh, Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't want to pile on, but I heard this week uh, Robert uh, Zadar passed away. Too. Robert Zadar, who From I did Tango a movie with Cash. called The Waiter. Oh, oh. And Tango and Cash. Yeah. Oh, the Waiter. He, world's biggest chin. Yeah. Makes, Remember that guy, Tango Jay and Cash? Leno, big chin? Never yeah, seen Tango Jay and Cash. Leno oh. look like, movie Jail. Uh, mm, movie Jail. Tango and Cash. I've never seen Tango and Cash. And yet, I would love it. Also, Kurt Russell is in Fast Seven. Or yeah, Furious oh, that's Seven, right. Or that's right. There was Seven. a Kurt Russell sighting. Yeah, Bobby Zadar made Jay Leno's chin look like a grade schooler. <laughs> no, oh, he really did. I know it, who you're it, talking about. That was about. his feature. Yeah. Is was yeah. Huge Ma- Maniac chin. Cop. Sorry. Maniac yeah, Maniac Cop. Cop. Yeah. Oh, I know Robert Zadar. I didn't tell you to speak Adam for a minute there. Sorry. Maniac yeah. Cop. Thank you. <laughs> he actually. Um, <laughs> He died of heart failure, and he died in Pensacola because he was there doing a Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Wow! So he had done; he had finished the con, had chest pains, and never got to leave Pensacola. So there some are people, people never leave there. Pensacola. It's just one of those things that I've yeah, heard. Yeah, but I was sorry to hear Robert died. He's my buddy. Yeah, and in his his name in Tango and Cash, his character name Face. Hmm. I right. guess that was his big feature That's he sad. had. So they yeah, named him face. That. Interesting. I can picture the five hour production meeting when at the fifth hour someone went face. face. <laughs> and more, sh- and more shower, we're gonna call him eight inch. It just hit me. Oh. Oh. All right. Anyone else see anything this week? Nope. We, got- we saw Scanders. Get Hard. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, yes. uh, Will Ferrell never been funnier. My wife actually oh, said awesome. to me in the theater last great. night. Great. She great. said, "I've never heard you laugh that loud." Oh, so great. I'm I'm giving you the two thumbs up. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's Kevin Hart, good. very very funny movie. Oh, I wanted good. to hear it was good. So I wanted to hear politically it. incorrect. Good. Yeah. Yes. Frankly, who gives a shit? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So. That's good. That's I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. Oh, good. Yeah, I was hoping. Good. They're glad rated R Red Band trailer. That's hilarious. I, I was hoping the movie, the whole movie was good. All right. All right here we go. Well, let's get on to Karen's awesome. celebrations of the birthdays of those who make the movies. It's our grand finale or finally, as Glenn might call it. Yes. It's our time for Karen's birthdays. Second. Take it away. <laughs> oh, hang on. Let me get the music set All up. Right. And here we go. <laughs> Let's start off our week of birthdays by wishing a very happy birthday to Mr. Bill Murray, who turned <gasps> 64, but Bill can play anywhere Murray! from a Ghostbuster to a Blockbuster. We all love Bill Murray. That's why I celebrate his birthday many times throughout the year, because it's not really his birthday. It's oh. just April Fool's. Bill! Oh. 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 Bing! Oh. Bing! Oh. Totally. You did. But I will tell the listening world how I know it's not Bill Murray's birthday, because, because. Karen set up our wedding 
on Bill Murray's we got birthday. Married on Bill Murray's and it's not birthday. my anniversary. Oh my God. <laughs> I, anyway. I think it is Dr. Leo Marvin's birthday today. <laughs> Fantastic. Dr. Leo! <laughs> I love Dr. Leo. Baby steps. Dr. Leo Marvin, I'm Dr. sailing. Leo Marvin. Let's start let's actually start off our week of birthdays by wishing a very happy yet early birthday to our guest, <gasps> Glenn Marshall. Oh! Happy birthday, Glenn Marshall. I won't tell you how old he turns. 56. Oh, not happy, not ashamed happy, of it. Happy, happy but can play anywhere you. from protective to detective. Mm. We will <laughs> We know that he served for our two television's most famous fictional presidents, President Jed Bartlett on The West Wing and President David Palmer on 24. And Glenn IMDb has you quoted as saying, "The only po- people who have done more military roles than me are dead." Are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because we like to play games here. So we're going to play a game here. And Glenn knows the Ooh. answers. We don't. I don't even really know the answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a title or a position of someone either in the military or police. And you're going to, we're just going to all guess whether or not you've played any character that had that title. For example, <laughs> like a lieutenant. You were a lieutenant in Black Hawk Down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we would go yes or no. All right. I was a lieutenant in the court martial of Jackie Robinson mm-hmm. as well. Ooh. There you go. Or a lieutenant. Lieutenant? Yes. All right, so or that Louis. was the first one. All there right. <laughs> Hang on a second. So, have you ever been, and don't tell us until we guess, a medical courier? No. Oh, Glenn's not going to waste his time currying medical. All right. Wait, let me flip in the medical courier. Medical That's courier. a guy who takes curry from one place to another? <laughs> yes, he does and it medically. Medical grade curry. And tell me when I can chime <laughs> in. All right, chime All right in. Glenn, I, go I ahead. Give up. The answer is yes, and yes. it was in a movie called The Island. Yep. Oh, directed the by Island. Michael Bay. Yes. Yes. That's a good <laughs> under. Rated Michael Bay movie. Has Glenn ever played a captain? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. got to be. Well, that's uh, X Men, right? Aren't you a captain in X Men? No, he's a captain. Ma- uh, he's captain. Oh, he's a. Well, is that a pilot or a captain? A captain. It said captain. I don't know. Because oh, if he's, if you know, because they call Definitely pilots captain. captains. I think in, this is and a captain. And he was captain. one of those in Air Force One. Oh. Well, I have here, Glenn. Would you like to tell us? No, go ahead. I have here <laughs> blood work. You I've actually dead. played a captain multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. In blood work. Uh, NYPD Blue. Um, Law and Order. Oh. Yeah, I've, that's happened so a lot. Great. Have you ever played, here is another one, a bugler or trumpeter? Well, I'm going to say yes, because that's just such an obscure credit. Mm-hmm. Yes. In real light, late, Glenn, na- uh, late night on Tom Cruise. Right. Oh. Uh, but Good. no, I've never, never. I've never done that in my career. Well, maybe someday you'll Does get it to say do that. that I did? No, I just okay. made that up. Yeah, you were, you were, I'm just being an idiot. You're a bugler. <laughs> it says you ate bugles in one of your well, roles. Well, it seems like a musician. Have you, delicious snack. Go ahead. Have you ever played a cop? And I'm not saying a police officer. I'm saying cop. Oh, credited as credited cop, as not officer? Cop. Yeah. Oh. That's no, a, no. Glenn, no, Glenn has never. He's always been ranked. He's always been ranked. He's always been ranked yes. for special They probably card. listed me as that in for Tango and Cash. You're right about uh, your uh, career. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Has Glenn ever played a bombardier? Pilot the bombardier. A bombardier, ladies and gentlemen. Pilot the bombardier. Bombardier, bombardier, bombardier. bombardier. I'm Pearl, Pearl say- Harbor, yes. Glenn? That's probably right. I'm not 100% <laughs> certain. That's funny. In Pearl Harbor, they don't give him the title bombardier. So I'm going to say no. Oh. And Glenn, you don't know that you were a bombardier? What was I a bombardier? You weren't. Then? Okay. Oh, <laughs> amazing so, stories. That's, now, that's right. a good trick one. I right. just tricked you. Sergeant. We all know he's played sergeant a thousand times. How about a saddler? A, a saddler? saddler? Sure. Does the bombardier wear nice Sadler? little pants? <laughs> he does. <laughs> nice tight pants. A, a William what? Sadler? He was not a saddler, but has he ever been a park ranger? Park Ranger. This that would be a one. yes in a movie called Grizzly Park. That's right. Oh, wow. I know that <laughs> one. And lastly, has Glenn ever played a candy striper? God, candy I hope not. Striper. I don't think so. I don't think so. Glenn, have you ever played a candy striper? No, I have not. No, you're not. <laughs> and you are correct. So, Glenn, happy birthday. That was very Thank exciting. You, darling. And lastly, let's wish a very happy birthday to Michael Fassbender, who turns 37. Ah! But can play anywhere from a soldier wow. in 300 with glistening abs to the lead in shame with a glistening... All right, stop it right there. All right. <laughs> now, Bart, you know how much I love when celebrities sing. This is true. People say, hey, can you tell me two things about Karen Volpe I don't know? First of all, this is her last show. April Fools, oh. and secondly, <laughs> yes. she loves when celebrities sing. I do love when celebrities sing, so I couldn't find any of Glenn singing, but <gasps> I found Michael Fassbender singing a little something called oh, wow. I Love You from the movie Frank. 
a movie I would oh, like yeah. to see. But I'm interested. I saw, I saw this performed on the Colbert Report. It got me really interested in that movie. Oh, okay. Do you have time to have me sing a very short song for uh, you? Oh, well, yes. Uh, Frank, yeah. Yeah. Of course. You do? Yes. Sure. Uh, this is a tribute to my father who taught me this song when I was a little boy, and I do it on stage at all of my shows, oh, all nice. the extra miles. Sweet. Mile. It's just to warm up the audience. It goes like this. It's called There's a Hole in the Bottom of the Sea. Hmm. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a log. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a bump. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a frog on the bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a frog on a bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a frog. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a ward on the frog on the bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a ward on the frog on the bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a ward. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hair on the ward and a frog on the bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hair on the ward and a frog on the bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hair. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a flea on the hair on the ward and a frog on the bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a flea on the hair on the ward and a frog on the bump on a log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a flea. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There are wings on the flea on the hair on the ward and a frog on the bottom of the log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There are wings on the flea on the hair on the ward and a frog in the bottom of the log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There are wings. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's blood in the veins back of the wing flea on the hair on the ward and a frog in the bottom of the log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's veins in the speckles on the wings on the flea on the hair on the ward and a frog in the bottom of the log in a hole in the bottom of the sea. There are veins. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. We're halfway done. <laughs> and it goes on and on and on. So I'll cut to the last verse. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Okay. I'll cut right to the last Woo. verse. I'll sing it slow and then fast. Here's the last verse. <laughs> There's a hole in the cavities, in the teeth, in the germs, in the corpuscles, in the blood, in the veins, in the speckles, in the wings, in the flea, in the hair, in the wart, in the frog, in the bump, in the log, in the hole, in the bottom of the sea. Now fast. There's a hole in the cavities, in the teeth, germs, corpuscles, in the blood, in the veins, speckles, in the wing, in the flea, in the hair, in the wart, in the frog, in the bump, in the log, in the hole, in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole, hole in, in the, the bottom, bottom of, of the, the sea. sea. <laughs> there it is. Yeah! That reminds me of the green grass grows all around. You know, feel that free to cut that. <laughs> yeah, and the green awesome. Area. Oh, I love that. And the tree and the hole on the ground. That was I don't great. care if it ever makes it to the audience, but that was for you guys. Thank you. I love that. No, that makes. But that's. I'm going to pull that as a separate clip. <laughs> <laughs> that. Are you kidding? Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps another uh, movie showcast. Everybody, together we are the movie guys. Individually, we are. Yeah. Bart oh, nice. You can follow us on Twitter at the movie guys for daily jokes and links. Also, Facebook.com/slash the movie guys iTunes, Vimeo, YouTube, Funny or Die, SoundCloud, Vine, Instagram, LinkedIn, Meerkat. No Meerkat tonight? I didn't Meerkat. Maybe next week. New phone. Too interested uh, in the guests. Yeah. That's Thanks right. to Glenn Morshower, yeah. speaking of guests. Yeah. Go out and, and, and uh, check out Flutter. Absolutely. Yeah. April 7th on VOD, all your VOD digital formats. And where else can we find you? Do you do the Twitter or any of the social media Oh, stuff? I do. I oh, do cool. Twitter and Facebook. And you do positive things and we can get daily inspiration from you? You betcha. I love it. Is it, it. So at Glenn Moore Show or is it at uh, the Extra Mile or what are they looking for? Uh, the, it's it's uh, at Glenn Moore Shower, and then I have three Facebook pages, but the one with the big audience in front of me, that's my personal page. Okay. And I do answer comments from fans. And there's Wonderful. two A-ins in Galayan. You bet. Galayan. Galayan. Uh, thanks to Steve Schultz as well for his writing contributions to the show every week. And remember, you can always find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. Next week, we're back with a whole uh, new batch of movies. Uh, not Furious 7, but real April movies. <laughs> we'll be back with those next week as Furious 7 continues to heat up the box office, no doubt. And we will see you then. Marsh comes in like a lion and goes out furious? That doesn't make sense. Prodigal son waits to return to where the dogs play pool.